Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Patterns, level five, patterns at varying scale. Um, when you're looking at patterns, you should always start by defining the system that you're going to investigate. But in this video, we're gonna talk about patterns and what patterns do we see at varying scales? All the way from the macroscopic, what you can see with your naked eye, to things you can see under the microscope, to things that you would have to understand through some kind of an atomic model. So we're gonna be looking for patterns at each of these different scales. The object that represents patterns, remember, is a prism, and the reason why is that each time we look at something, in this case, at a different scale, we're gonna see something else. And looking at the patterns and how they compare at different scales tells us a little bit about what's going on with that material. After you watch this video, you should be able to understand uh, patterns at varying scales in, in common things like uh, salt uh, or sodium chloride or something like fool's gold um, and trying to figure out what's going on at the atomic level that describes what we're seeing. But we're gonna start by looking at wood, and we're gonna start by defining the system that we're going to investigate. So we're gonna be investigating wood, um, but what we're using is this scale block because we'll be looking at wood at the macroscopic, microscopic, and then atomic scale. And so I can break it apart into those different scales. This would be the macroscopic, this would be what it looks like at the microscopic, and this is what it looks like at the atomic scale. So this is what it would looks like if I look at it under the microscope. This is what it would look like if we're looking at all the atoms inside. So what we're gonna go through and do is just recognize what are the patterns at each of these different scales. So I'll do this first one, and then I'll have you do one on your own. So some patterns that we would see at each of the different scales, patterns we would see at the microscopic scale could be the color, the texture of the material, or the hardness of the material. So we would have to feel it and we'd have to look at the material to figure out what patterns we see at the macroscopic. At the next level, under the microscope, we can still see colors, um, but we would be looking for, since we can't touch it, what shapes do we see and what structures do we see? And then at the atomic level, color is kind of meaningless. And so at the, at the atomic level, we're really just looking for shape and structure. So let me go through and figure out all the different patterns that I would see in wood at each of these different levels. So at the macroscopic level, uh, one of the patterns that I see is the color is just brown. If you feel wood, you would say that its texture is rough. This one's been sanded, but it's rough. And then its hardness, I'm saying it has a hardness of medium. Like I could scratch wood if I really tried with my fingernail, so I'm gonna say it's got a medium hardness. Now let me go through just looking at this image and then tell you what I would see under the microscope, what patterns. So at the microscopic level, I see the color being kind of brown, but we're seeing different stripes. When it comes to the shape, I see long uh, lines. And then when it comes to the structure, when I was looking at the microscope, it almost looks like cylinders, like little tubes that are connected together. And now let me look at the atomic level. Okay, at the atomic level, what I see is that there are these little rings, so there's carbon rings, uh, and then these lines are connected together. So I'm seeing these rings that are connected together in a linear fashion. So what can I start doing is I can start looking at patterns. So what patterns at the macroscopic level could I explain by looking at patterns in the microscopic level? So for example, uh, wood feels very kind of smooth in one way, but rough in the other. And the reason that might be is because of this, these little cylinders that are in the wood that run in just one direction. Um, or if we're looking at the shapes, these rings are put together in lines and maybe the lines at the atomic level kind of contribute to the lines that we see at the microscopic level. Or another one might be um, maybe these rings, uh, the rings at this atomic level 
contribute to the overall structure of these cylinders that we see at the microscopic level. So all I'm doing when I'm looking for patterns at varying levels is I'm looking for patterns at each of these levels and how could they help us understand what's going on uh, at the macroscopic level. So what I'm gonna do is clear these off and what I want you to try to do is go through the same thing. We're gonna use another material you're probably familiar with and that's going to be um, graphite or pencil lead. All right, I've changed this out and now we have graphite. So we're gonna be looking at graphite. Graphite at the macroscopic level is going to be what we have in pencil lead. If we were to look at it at the microscopic or the atomic, it's going to have a different appearance. So I'll put these out. So what I'd like to have you do uh, is go through and try to figure this out based on graphite. I've kind of left these big um, patterns that you would see at each of those levels. So what you're gonna try to do is figure out what goes below each of those. Um, if it's easier, I put a Google slide deck below this video so you could use that and there's maybe more detailed pictures of the graphite at each level. So pause the video, try it on your own and then come back and let's see how we compare. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would look through patterns that I can see with the macroscopic level. So that's what I can see with the naked eye. So let me write some of those in. So I found the color of graphite to be black, its texture is rough, and it's really soft. Um, that's why it's pencil lead. It can be um, knocked apart just by the paper itself. Now let me look at the microscopic level. So at the microscopic level, I see it being kind of a shiny gray color. Uh, the shape is linear. And then the structure, you, you have little layers that you can almost flake off. And so I could say, maybe these layers are what contribute to the hardness being very, very soft. Um, or the color at the microscopic contributes to the color at the macroscopic. Now let's look at what's going on as far as patterns at the atomic level. So at the atomic level, what I see are these little hexagonal rings. It's hard to see, but there's little hexagons in here. And then those are connected together in layers. When I was looking at the wood, the layers kind of were connected, but here with the graphite, the layers aren't so connected. So maybe those layers contri contribute to the layers that we would see at the microscopic level. Or maybe those layers contribute to the softness overall. And so all we're doing when we're looking at each of these is we're saying, are there things at the atomic level that would explain patterns we see at the microscopic, that would explain patterns that we see at the macroscopic? So I've done this for uh, wood, we've done graphite together. I would encourage you to find one of the Google slide decks below this video. And you could do the same thing with an object like salt, uh, sodium chloride, or you could do pyrite. Um, this is fool's gold and see what patterns are you seeing at lit different levels and how do those patterns at varying scales allow us to see things that we normally couldn't see, um, patterns that help explain their structures. So that's level five, that's patterns at varying scale and I hope that was helpful.